Next, we are going to look at columns with other kinds of support conditions in uh, opposed to the only the pin pin condition that we looked at. But before we go there, I want you to be aware of one particular thing. See, for the columns and the pin pin column that we looked at, the formula which we derived that you know that PCR equals to pi square EI divided by L square. So pi square is pi square is a material property and we have an I and the denominator we have L. Right. So the L is, you know, same for the length of the column that you have now a critical role in determining the, you know, the PCR or the critical load is your I. Now it depends upon about which axis your column is about to buckle. Let me show you an example. For example, if you take a look at, you know, this section this is a long scale that I have. If you take a look at this section over here, you know, the I is incredibly different if you are computing about this axis where this is the B and this is the H. So 1 by 12 BH cube is very high as opposed to when you are compared when you are when you are calculating about this axis over here, right, where the B and H flip. So that 1 by 12 BH cube, it, you know, varies significantly. So that's why this scale that I have over here, if I, you know, clamp the bottom and if I try to buckle, it is incredibly easy to buckle this about this particular axis over here that is about, you know, this axis about this vertical axis over here then if i'm trying to buckle it like this about this one it is incredibly difficult for me to buckle about this plane whereas like let me show about this plane rather about this plane it is incredibly easy for me to buckle you know this this scale that i have over here so always keep in mind that it really depends upon which configuration we are trying to buckle this problem was not there when i was talking about you know this small uh, you know the refill that i was there because it's a circular section so it is easy for me to buckle about this it is easy for me to buckle about you know this one over here so always keep in mind when you are calculating the e uh, sorry the i the the second moment of the area about which axis you are computing and about upon particular axis it will be easier to buckle the column than the other one now let's go ahead and jump and uh, jump jump ahead and look at the columns with the other kinds of support conditions which are there now for the other support condition this so this is what we looked at the pin pin columns over now what are the other support conditions that can be there the other support conditions it can be pin and you can have a fixed at the bottom over here you can have a fixed fixed case now fixed fixed remember it is it's fixed uh, in the sense it does not allow any rotation over here and you know uh, deflection about you know this axis about the horizontal axis but about the vertical axis it allows you uh, deflection otherwise your column simply won't buckle the point b will not move down and you can also have this condition over here the free fixed case so, so you have a free and a fixed so out of these which one do you think that is the easiest to buckle here yeah, this one is the easiest to buckle now this one is probably the, the most difficult to buckle over here this is maybe intermediate you know the level of difficulty may be intermediate so what Euler did and you can find this in a standard textbook and also in the notes that I will upload for each of the support conditions you can go ahead and mathematically derive the uh, the 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 uh, you know the the differential equations using which you can find the critical load for each of these different conditions now that is not my intention over here to go ahead and take every support condition and do the derivation you can find it in the notes or in a standard textbook my intention over here is to teach you one very simple method or a very simple concept which also you know came from Euler that how do you remember that how that what is going to be the value of the critical load for the different support conditions over here and the reason why we studied this first case that the pin pin column there is a particular reason all of the critical load derivations all the formulation it eventually falls back on this one over here. so you are essentially trying to mold each of these problems into an equivalent pin pin ended column so the hand for the pin pin ended column remember we know that you know this pi square ei divided by l square so we have to mold it in some way it follows back into here and then we apply the similar equation so let's go ahead and take a look at that now if we if you remember this is again the pin pin column that we looked at now how to extend the Euler's formula to establish equivalence the one which I are talking about now if you take a look at this column over here you see that there is this concept that we are going to learn let me take uh, let me uh, activate my pen over here that is the concept of effective length le so here you see we have looked at the length l now what is this you know effective length that is le over here now effective length LE with any support condition, so the word any support condition is important over here, is the length of an equivalent pin pin classic Euler column. Now how do we establish this equivalent? Now if you take a look at this column over here, can you tell me the points where the bending moment is zero? 
right so in this column if you see it's a pin end over here roller over here so naturally you know from your shear force diagrams bending moment diagram chapter that when we have the pin ended or the pin roller ended suppose the bending moments are zero and zero over here so so note that in a pin pin column the moments at the ends are the zero so that means that so the easiest way to remember this concept of effective length given any support condition is that le is going to be the distance between the points of in inflection or inflection means that your curvature changes essentially you're going from a kappa to positive to kappa negative remember kappa is directly related to the moment right when moment is positive kappa is positive so the point of inflection or point of contraflexure you're also familiar with this term that is when the bending moment changes sign or the bending moment becomes zero at those points over here so now you see in this case in the case of a pin pin column your le that is the distance between the points of contraflexure that is where bending moment is zero is simply equals to l over here so here in this case your l is nothing but equals to l now what we will see that this formula that we had established that your uh, pcr let me write that over here pcr equals to pi square ei in this case it is divided by l e square where here for the pin pin support condition you have l e equals to l so it simply boils down to pi square ei divided by l square sorry i uh, wrote l instead of i so let me correct that pi square e i divided by l square right so now what all the, the the only thing which we have to do is that for the other support conditions we have to find the distance where we have the bending moments as zero the distance between the points of contraflexure now we have to find the distance you have to plug it back into this general equation to get the pcr for the support condition so let's go ahead and take a look at that right so this we have already seen the pin pin columns which we have already covered over here let's talk about the first one the pin fix and as i said for each of the support conditions you can go back from the basic formulation for the you know the deflection of the beams and the moment writing ei d square y dx square equals to m and you can derive this but this is just uh what it, it eventually falls back to what we are going to see right now now say for the first case so these are the four cases which you look at let's look at the first case over here so if you see if it's a pin and a fixed end so if you take a look at this case a little closely so it's a pin end over here so at this particular point your bending moment equals to zero and if you apply this load p this column is going to you know you know bend something like this over here now we already know the moment is zero over here now you take a look at you know in this region now if you see over here here you have like a hogging kind of a moment so if you have to just draw the internal bending moments which are happening over here here the internal bending moments are actually happening like this so you have a hogging kind of a moment over here whereas here in this part of the beam or the column in this in this case here you are having a sagging kind of a moment a sagging kind of a moment meaning that you are having you know this kind of a um, internal moment over here which causes the beam to sag the beam to smile over in this case over here so you see that from this hogging region you're slowly moving to a sagging region over here and correspondingly your curvature you know goes from a negative to a positive curvature that you're looking over here now if you take a look in this one in this case so that means there must be a point where you are as you are transitioning from regions of negative moment to positive moment here so there must be a point where you are you know going to have a zero bending moment in this in in this region over here now i i use the term positive and negative it of course depends upon the direction of the axis for example in this case this is probably going to be a sagging and this is a hogging but you get the idea it is just two opposite you know moment signs which are which are happening and as a result of which in between you will have a uh, a point where your bending moment changes sign or you have a point of contraflexure so it so happens if you draw the bending moment diagram or if you derive from the basic equations it so happens it happens at this particular point and this is the distance remember so here at this point so let me maybe explicitly write it so here your m equals to zero and here at this point also you have m equals to zero and what we said that the distance between the points where the moment equals to zero that is le that is the effective length right and it so happens for this case for the pin fixed column if the total length of the column is l this distance le it comes out as 0 0.7 times l right? so if le comes out as 0 0.7 times l put it back in the original formulation it is the general formulation that is there that we know that pcr is equals to pi square 
ei divided by le square now if you put le equals to 0 0.7 l over here sorry the column disappeared yeah if you have put le equals to 0 0.7 l for the pin fixed column you will get the value of the critical load as pcr equals to 2.05 pi square ei divided by l square so this is the formula for the case where you have a pinned and a fixed column so see the only thing that you have to remember is not these formulas over here just that le that what is the le for a pinned and a fixed column so you put 0 0.7 it is 0 0.7 l put it back in the original equation and you will get this one in a jiffy right so this is the pinned fixed case let's look at this fixed fixed column over here for the fixed fixed column remember as i said this column is free to you know, come down it is only restricted to you know move about this horizontal axis and its rotation is also restricted at both the ends that you have over here now for this fixed fixed column and as you can tell this column is the is the toughest to buckle for that matter so this is the bending moment uh, the you know the, the the deflected shape of the beam and if you draw the bending moment diagram for this one you will see the bending moment becomes zero at these two points over here now if you mark the distances from this the bending moment will be very high here very high here you see, again you see the uh, sign of the bending moment is slightly hogging you have a sagging over here and this is where the transition happens the inflection point or the point of contraflexure now if you calculate these distances these distances come out as the central distance that is the point of the zero bending moment comes out as 0 0.5 times l or half of the total length l and this this comes out as 0 0.25 oops, sorry 0 0.25 l that is quarter of the total length this is also 0 0.25 l and these are not going to be relevant for us because we are most interested in this one over here so again let's put it back in the original formulation so we have uh, pcr equals to pi square ei divided by le square so if you put you know 0 0.5 times le as 0 0.5 times l over here so le is nothing but 0 0.5 times l so you will get for the fixed fixed case you will get the value of pcr as 4 times pi square ei divided by l square now take a moment and you know look at this formula which we just wrote over here see for the pinned pinned case we just needed pi square ei by l square now when you have a fixed fixed case you need four times the loads it is four times tougher to actually buckle a column which is in a fixed fixed condition the previous case it is it was 2.05 times tougher than the pin pin case over here so the last case which is remaining is this guy over here now this is an interesting problem because you see here this is the is the column which is easiest to buckle but here you see this is like a cantilever column now we have looked at cantilever beams this is a cantilever column here you have the load p but you see here we know it's a free end so the bending moment is going to be zero anywhere else within the column the bending moment is not zero so how do we find the point of contraflexure over here or where the bending moments are zero well this is a case where Euler urges you to use some of your imagination or some of your creativity over here if you take this column and if you write it something like this over here that you have the p and if you draw a mirror image of that one this will be the opposite end where your bending moment will be zero it is just a mirror image of the top beam that you have. it is a hypothetical concept but it's a mirror image of what you have at the top over here so as you see since it's a mirror image if this length was l over here here in this particular case the distance between the zero bending moments here and the mirror image here it is going to be two times l so here le equals to two times l that we have over here and so for the for the free fixed column we have you know, sort of hypothesized that it is going to have the least amount of resistance to buckling so in this case again let's put back in the original formulation p square pcr equals to pi square ei divided by le square so le equals to 2l so here your pcr is going to become pi square ei divided by 4l square again take a look at the formula and compare it with your basic uh, pin pin case 
Uh, the basic pin pin case is pi square ei divided by l square now here you need one fourth of the load to buckle that particular column over there so now if you put all of these together and if you summarize in a particular table this is overall how it looks like so in this table as you can see the general formula pi square ei by le square for the pin pin case over here your le equals to l so it boils down to this one for this particular case for the free fixed case le is 2l pi square ei divided by 4l square the one which is easiest to buckle then we have the one which is toughest to buckle le equals to half of l over here so in this case you have the load is four times than what you need for this one and this is somewhere in the intermediate range of difficulty to buckle here le is you know 0 0.669 or roughly what we wrote 0 0.7 times l and corresponding to pcr is roughly 2.05 or more exact 2.04 46 pi square ei divided by l square so i hope with this lecture now you have understood that how the buckling load you know varies with the different support conditions now these are not the only support conditions you can have you can have slightly more complicated support conditions where say instead of a free end over here i give a spring like right? you have a, your vertical spring which allows for some level of deformation you can have those conditions as well but in this particular course uh, at this at the level of undergraduate education you are in you are not going to look at those cases where we have you know certain complicated conditions or otherwise i can also instead of a vertical spring i can put a rotational spring as well right so we are going to look at these simple cases next what we are going to do we are going to look at two example problems for columns with different support conditions now you are thinking that you know now you exactly know the support is easy but then when you look at you know actual building the support conditions in different directions may change and also as i said in the beginning of the lecture you can have you know different uh, eyes about the different axis so let's go ahead and take a look at couple of example problems to clarify some of these concepts that we have learned <laughs> 